Hello everyone, it's me, your average bonehead, Jay. I love The Loud House. You all know this. It's my third favorite Nick show. I love the characters. I love the episodes. Yada, yada, yada. I've said it a bunch of times already. What I haven't talked about are the episodes that I don't particularly like. Yeah, despite this show being really good and having some of the greatest episodes in any cartoon I've ever seen, it can also casually just have some of the worst, and I don't know how this happens. And today, I want to look at 10 episodes that I think are the absolute bottom of the barrel when it comes to this show. Two disclaimers. One, yes, I'm fully aware this is a kid's show, but I'm allowed to complain when a show that I know damn well can do better phones it in. And two, this list is opinion-based. So, feel free to disagree and place your own top worst list in the comments, as long as you're civil about it, please. So, without any further ado, here is my top 10 worst Loud House episodes. Number 10. Really awesome! Guys, we did it! We actually... <clears throat> Cover Girls. Now, I probably got some of you scratching your heads going, really? Cover Girls on this list? Well, let me explain. At face value, this isn't a really bad episode, but to me, there's just so many little things in it that annoy me and it just don't make any sense that it builds into a relatively unpleasant viewing experience. The plot is, during spring cleaning, all the sisters go out to do something, and Lincoln, behind their parents' backs, cover for all his sisters, so none of them get in trouble for it. This all goes south when Pop-Pop calls, and Lincoln is forced to call all of his sisters back. And in the time it takes him to do that, he disguises himself and whichever other sister shows up as another sister. And they keep doing this and doing this until they're all mixed and matched, and in the end, when they think they've finally gotten away with it, they are caught by their parents and are punished by having to go to all the events they wanted to go to, dressed as they currently are. And this is where one of my major problems with the episode comes in. I think Rita and Lynn Sr. come off as way too harsh when it came to how they punished their children in this episode. I don't get how humiliating your kids in front of their friends, important people, or clients is going to teach them a lesson about not swapping clothes or running off during spring cleaning even though everything was still taken care of, but okay, you do you, parents of the year. But speaking of clients, this leads into another problem. What some of the sisters ran off to do are things Rita and Lynn Sr. should know about, like Luann's jobs and Lola's pageant. Like, how did they not know those were happening and put spring cleaning on this day? This episode just doesn't make any sense when it comes to that stuff. There's also minor plot holes like all over the place, like how did the parents not hear them leave? How did they not hear them come back? How does Lincoln just casually have clothes of all the sisters' measurements for all of their sizes? Why did any of them choose to leave when they realized what their punishment was? Why didn't Lincoln call off Clyde? It doesn't make any sense at all. The only good thing this episode has going for it is the opening part where the sisters are trying to stall their parents long enough for Lincoln to get back in time for curfew, which honestly, if that was the entire episode, it'd be one of my favorites, and just the overall fact this episode kind of shows that their sibling bond is unbreakable. But that was not enough to save this episode. Also, this episode's kind of obsolete now because Sister Act is just a better version of it. Moving on. Number 9. Oh, you're not as clever as you think, Lincoln Loud. Sound of Silence. This episode begins the ever infamous trend with this show of Lincoln going through hell and coming out with nothing to show for it, sometimes even less. The plot is that Lincoln buys noise-canceling headphones so he can block out his sisters constantly annoying him. But this plan goes south the next day when it turns out he apparently promised to do something for Lola, and if he doesn't do it to her on time, he will have to face her wrath. So he's frantically going around asking his sisters what he promised Lola, but it turns out he also apparently promised each of them something that is both physically and emotionally degrading towards him. As it turns out, this was all for nothing as all the sisters were working together to get back at Lincoln for blocking them out. And and then the episode ends on this note. You had it coming, little bro. You can't just ignore us. We're your family. And remember, you're not the only one who has to live in a noisy house. The problem with this episode is that message is incredibly hypocritical. In context of other episodes, Lincoln never barged into the sisters' rooms, and anytime he would accidentally wander in there, he was almost immediately met with threats of violence. So that already on its own makes this message not work in this show, but if you want to remove the context of other episodes and look at this one on its own, the message still doesn't work, because Lincoln didn't just wake up one day and buy the earbuds, he did it because the entire first few minutes of the episode were spent 
of the sisters just annoying Lincoln for no reason. He couldn't get any form of privacy no matter where he went. So then it begs the question, why is it a problem that he just wants a few minutes of silence? Or just privacy for that matter. Wanting that shouldn't be a negative. It's not with the sisters, so why is it a problem with Lincoln? This episode really is the beginning of the moments where it seems like the sisters can get whatever they want, yet for some reason it's a problem when the boy wants it. And that just doesn't sound right at all. Speaking of boys, number eight. <laughs> One of the boys. Talk about wasted potential. Such an obvious episode to do for a show like this, the gender swap episode, is wasted on a bad season 1 episode. In this episode, Lincoln is once again annoyed by his sisters, so he ends up going to a parallel dimension, yes, where he has 10 brothers instead of 10 sisters. And it's all downhill from there, because the loud brothers are rough, gross, loud, er and overall more aggressive towards the Lincoln than his sisters are. Yeah, this episode's basically making the borderline sexist statement that Lincoln's life was only so good because he had sisters and not brothers. And it's kind of weird for a show that has 10 female protagonists, each with different personality traits, have nothing to do with the fact that their girls say that a group of boys are all basically the same. Like, in the end, Lincoln gets tired of the brothers and wants to head back, and when he tries going back to his dimension, he ends up in a dimension where he still has the brothers, but now he's the sister, and they're all much nicer to him, which, honestly, while still not really good to have, should have just been the whole plot of the episode. Lincoln goes to this dimension, and he's the sister, and they're the brothers. It could have led to a good message of... No matter what, your family is still your family. Or another way they could have done it is that the Loud Brothers have the quote-unquote stereotypical boy personalities, but then default back to the personalities of the sisters, and Lincoln then learns the message. But instead, it has a very eyebrow-raising message about girls being better than boys. That's just very, very weird. Also, another problem with this episode is the pacing is terrible. It's not until the second act of the episode where we even get to the parallel universe and meet the Loud Brothers. This episode just reeks of wasted potential. Number 7. Looks like you're in Mr. Bobner's class. Schooled. Being nice to this episode first. I actually really adore the stuff with Lori, Lenny, and Lily sprinkled throughout the episode. Honestly, if their whole subplot was just an 11 minute episode, once again, it'd be one of my favorites. But unfortunately, that's not the plot of this episode. Instead, Schooled is the beginning of the ever infamous and ever dreaded Lincoln and his friends episodes that plagued most of season 5. Episodes where Lincoln and his friends, Clyde, Zack, Rusty, Liam, and Stella, are stripped down of their unique personalities, implying Stella had one, and are all given interchangeable dialogue and go on nonsensical slash boring school life adventures. While Lincoln's far more interesting sisters are non-existent. And because these episodes wants to give all six friends equal screen time, there is no character development throughout these episodes. It took us till season six to learn anything new about Stella, and she was introduced in season three. Man, you don't have to make it that obvious that she only exists just because Ronnie Ann had a spin-off show that was far better than anything season five gave us. And Schooled is the perfect representation of all of this, as its story is both nonsensical and boring. Lincoln is not in the same class as all of his friends for middle school, and instead in a very toxic environment. So after telling his principal that, hey, I'm being bullied by both a student and the teacher, can you put me in a different class? Their principal, with their brilliant intelligence, for some reason puts Lincoln in another school in Canada. And because I guess everyone was just taking crazy pills today, Rita and Lynn Sr. have no problem driving their son across the border every morning. Also, their portrayal of Canada makes me roll my eyes. But then this entire episode proves to be pointless, because in the end Lincoln manages to get back home, because lol, he didn't like the maple syrup, and he ends up back in the toxic environment he was at the beginning of the episode. Which is also weird, because this episode likes to just shrug off that oh well I guess this is just how it is even though they showed earlier in the episode that Lincoln's friends are incompetent without him yet later on they just ignore this and it's just okay now what was the point of the episode 
Also, two other side things. Uh, one, the song in the beginning is not good, which is inexcusable for this show when it comes to musical numbers. Same with the second song. And two, Lynn Jr. is the only other Loud sister to do anything in this plot. And she's terrible now and went back on her promise that she made in Middlemen because for some reason the writers don't know what to do with this character despite the fact that Rainbow Dash was right there. Get me out of here. Number six. It's my 12th birthday. Feels like I've been 11 forever. So this year, I'm doing it in style. David Steele style. Present danger. Now, this is another one that's probably going to leave people scratching their heads. And to be fair, this is definitely the most competently written of all the episodes on this list. However, my problem with this episode is what it isn't. What you need to know about this episode is that it's Lincoln's 12th birthday. Yes, they're finally aging up their main character. And this is one of the few times where all of Lincoln's friends and Lincoln's family are all in one location. This should be an easy slam dunk. One problem right off the bat though. This is another one of those episodes that feels like it should have been a special and that's only 11 minutes. The other problem is, despite being Lincoln's birthday, there is nothing special about this episode. This is a bland, boring episode where Lincoln is trying to find his missing present. That's it. The major side characters are not important to this episode. Hell, most of the show's main characters aren't important to this episode. I always envisioned a Lincoln birthday episode would be something similar to what Saving Royal Woods ended up being. And while Saving Royal Woods is a great episode, it should have been the Lincoln birthday episode. Instead, this episode is Lincoln mostly by himself. Hell, Lori doesn't even appear in this episode. I mean, for the love of God, can someone explain to me why Flip, Scoots, and Chandler have more lines of dialogue in a Lincoln birthday episode than his own sisters or friends for that matter? Only Loud Sisters that have any form of relevance to the episode is Lola, who just is there to complain, and Lisa, who only is there to give off a bunch of exposition that brings an already slow and boring story to a grinding halt. The rest of the plot of the episode doesn't even matter. It's a very by-the-numbers mystery, but it's once again Lincoln by himself. The rest of the Louds in the Loud House are not important. Hell, most of Lincoln's friends aren't even important to this episode. Oh, and Ronnie Ann being mentioned or even referenced? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. For an episode that's supposed to be a big status quo change for the series, this birthday left me feeling anything but happy. Number five. I'm a man on a mission and you'll just get in my way. No, we won't. Uh, we'll help you shop. Serial Offender is a terrible episode. Let's get this over with. This is another Lincoln torture episode where Lincoln just wants to get something mundane and God says nope and makes it so his sisters will torment him for the remainder of the 11 minutes. Yeah, Lincoln in this episode makes a deal with his mom that he can get a special brand of cereal if he proves how responsible he is in the store and getting everything else. But for some reason, he also has to take care of all 10 of his sisters, five of which are older than him, by the way. And the way the sisters are in this episode are just completely sick stupid and selfish, as they just go around the store causing problems that Lincoln for some reason has to clean up. I absolutely hate it when this show treats the sisters as obstacles rather than characters. On top of that, let's just add in an incompetent store manager who thinks Lincoln is causing trouble when it's this other kid who happens to just look like him. We have the sisters being very greedy at the ending, being upset that Lincoln gets a treat when they didn't make a deal with Rita, and when they finally get kicked out of the store that this is somehow all Lincoln's fault and only he gets grounded. Yeah, Rita only grounds Lincoln for this because the sisters were able to go and get the cereal. Which, okay, that makes everything better. They went and got Lincoln what he wanted. Yeah, Lincoln's still grounded and they never fessed up to Rita. Also, this episode's now completely obsolete now that Mall of Duty exists and is an infinitely better version of this episode. Which is good. Let's all promise to never look back. Number four. <laughs> Brawl in the family. It deserves all the hate it gets. This is just a mean episode. Majority of this episode is just fighting. It's just the sisters fighting because Lori and Lenny happen to get the same dress. Jeez, and I thought one of the boys was sexist. And of course their fighting only specifically causes problems for Lincoln. You see, Lincoln is the only one in this family who wants to take a direct approach and try and get Lori and Lenny to stop fighting, but he's told to stay out of it due to something called a sister fight protocol, which for some reason everyone but Lincoln knows, like even Bobby is aware of it. 
That doesn't make any sense. But the biggest flaw with this episode is I can't understand the message they are trying to convey. Because in the end, it shows that technically Lincoln not getting involved was the correct solution because they were able to work out their differences. And while yes, that is true to an extent that you do have to let people blow off some steam, at the same time, it is up to the parents to parent their children and get involved and break them up. But Rita and Lynn Sr. just cowered in their bedroom the entire episode. And therefore, it's somehow all Lincoln's fault. Also, if you guys don't want Lincoln getting involved with the argument, then how about stop making it so everything you do to try and get them to calm down inconveniences Lincoln? How about you don't do that? This entire episode is just so unpleasant to watch. We all may fight over dumb things, but I think we can all agree that this episode sucks. Number 3 Come on, you guys! Be your bad luck, Lincoln! You can't come! No such luck. Yeah, don't lie, you all saw this one coming eventually. This episode is another one that deserves all the hate it's ever gotten, as by far this is the show's most infamous episode. The plot is that Lincoln wants a break from having to go to all of his sister's events all the time, every day of every week, so he tries asking Lynn Jr. if he really needs to go to her game, but she makes sure he goes by threatening him with a bat. Yes, Lynn Jr. just threatened her little brother with a bat. Don't worry, the episode gets worse. When at the game, Lynn Jr.'s team loses, and somehow that's Lincoln fault, as she dubs Lincoln bad luck. Lincoln realizes this means he'll never have to go to any of Lynn Jr's games anymore, and continues to help spread around this little lie. Now I've seen some people try to claim that what happens next is Lincoln's fault because he continued to spread this lie, and I guess you could argue that? I mean, the entire point of the episode is supposed to be a simple don't lie story, but the torment Lincoln receives is not relative to the lie he tells. Because now it turns out everyone in the family believes Lincoln is bad luck. Even the parents and supposed genius Lisa also think Lincoln is bad luck. And they don't take him to anything anymore. This gets to the point where they lock him outside of the house at night and don't even let him back in in the morning. Once again, even the parents, supposed genius Lisa, and other sisters who supposedly really care about Lincoln, like Luna and Luann, all believe this and refuse to let Lincoln back into the house even after he begs them saying he's not bad luck. They only end up believing Lincoln's not bad luck at Lynn Jr.'s next game, where he ends up going there anyways and Lynn wins. But they think, because he was wearing a squirrel suit, that, that means it that was what was making him good luck and refused to let him take it off. No, I do not know how child services weren't called at all during this episode. Honestly, if you just cut the parents out and just make it the sisters, and in the end when the sisters kick Lincoln out of the house, everything starts going to hell and Lincoln is the one who solves it, and the message is something like, don't let superstitions be more important than family, you could have a pretty nice episode here. But for what it is, this episode is just mean and uncomfortable to watch. But to me, the biggest flaw of this episode is the stain it permanently left on the franchise. So many people pointed this episode to say why the show was bad. There are so many fan fictions out there of Lincoln uncharacteristically getting a violent revenge on them. And worst of all, this episode destroyed Lynn Jr.'s reputation. Yeah, all these years later and she is still yet to scrub off the stank this episode has left on her. Which sucks because I think her and Lana have the most adorable designs of the main 11. So it sucks that this one misstep made so most people hate her. Doesn't help that the writers still to this day don't know what to do with her. Literally the only positive to come out of this episode are these two fanfics. Everything else sucks. But on the bright side, I guess you could say the episode's name was correct. Number 2. One thing you guys should know is that Luann is actually my second favorite character in the entire series. Despite her being the happy-go-lucky prankster of the group, I find most of her episodes are about her dealing with insecurities that she has and having to overcome them. This usually leads to these episodes not only being really heartfelt but very poignant as well. And it's why Luann is my second favorite character. I say all this to explain why I absolutely despise the April Fools episodes. So stay tuned because the rest of this day is going to be doubly special. <laughs> All four of these episodes are basically the same god-awful, mean-spirited schlock. And that's why they all share the number two spot. Let's go over each of them. First up, April Fool's Rules. This is the beginning of this god-awful trend. The plot is it's April Fool's Day, and every member of the Laugh family is cowering in fear because they don't want to be pranked by Luann. Oh, and her pranks are not just her normal shtick. 
these are genuinely dangerous pranks she's going to use on them, because okay, I guess the writers did not care to understand Luann's character that much. And while technically Lincoln would have been safe if he just stayed in his room, he had no choice but to come out of his room because Luann weaponized his crush on Ronnie Ann against him, meaning Lincoln had to go through the house and activate all the traps to keep Ronnie Ann from getting pranked. That's awful. I swear to god if Ronnie Ann did not throw that pie at Luann at the ending of the episode, I probably would have punched through the wall. Fool's Paradise is even worse though. Yeah, it's just every member of the Loud family goes through some form of elaborate prank this time that would realistically kill them because Luann's a psychopath now. I think the two that get me the most is the fact that she pours chemicals on her 8 year old sister Lucy, and she also intentionally triggers the allergic reaction of her 6 year old sister Luana. Um, Mr. Skeleton, what am I supposed to find likable about Luann again? If I didn't bunch all these episodes together, then Fool Me Twice would definitely have been number one, no questions asked. I hate this episode. In this one, the family are so scared of Luann, they hire stunt doubles to take the brunt of her pranks. But then Luann manages to somehow trick them and lock her family she claims to love in the garage and have the stunt doubles go around town all day ruining the relationships, reputations, and careers of her so-called family. Now, and be warned, this is my Saluna shipper side coming out, you don't mess with Luna and Sam's relationship, Luann. I thought you claimed to care about it. Clearly, that was a lie. Yeah, it really does make you question if Luann actually did care in these episodes or if she was just faking it to get information for her next prank. Luckily, Luckily, these episodes don't ruin Luann's amazing streak of episodes because the April Fool's episodes are not canon. I mean, how do you have four April Fool's days in the time it takes to have two Christmases? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, and Silence of the Luanns is basically April Fool's rules again, but it's Lily instead of Luann causing the pranks because I guess the writers want to destroy her character as well. I guess it makes sense that the worst holidays is home to the worst episodes. Now that's what I call a sick, twisted joke. Number 1. Now, I probably got all of you on the edge of your seats, at least hopefully I do. What could possibly be the number one worst episode of The Loud House? What could possibly be worse than Brawl in the Family, No Such Luck, and Fool Me Twice? <laughs> well, that episode is Kings of the Con. Kitty, meet your worst nightmare! The Fool Deck! This is another episode that very easily could have been one of the greatest in the show. I mean, it's about Lincoln and Clyde, as well as all the sisters and their superhero personas, going to a convention to compete in a competition where they could possibly win and be in a movie. Maybe when they're there, they can run into someone trying to sabotage the competition and fight back, allowing them to win it. I mean, they basically did that story in the comics where they teamed up with Ronnie Ann. And it was great! Instead, we get the worst episode in the show. For some reason, the sisters are at their maximum jerkiness when it comes to this episode. Because all of them, not some, all of them, refuse to go to the convention until they are bribed by Lincoln and Clyde with the potential of being in a movie. Really? With Lori and Lola, I kind of get it, but all of them? But when they get to the convention, the sisters waste no time taking all the attention away from Lincoln and Clyde and putting it all on themselves and themselves alone, and they do not care once about that. But the judges are even worse. Unlike Michelle and Doug from Really Loud Music, who were actually funny characters, these guys are just walking stop signs for Lincoln and Clyde's dream. They only exist just to make Lincoln and Clyde feel miserable. And speaking of Lincoln and Clyde, they are somehow even worse. Even though you feel horrible for them from the fact that their passion is being ripped away from them, you can't help but to notice they're also horrible because of how they choose to retaliate. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, everyone in this episode is horrible. But that's just only the first of it. So let's just cut to the chase. Lincoln and Clyde decide for publicity's sake that they will kidnap the cat who is also starring in the movie and then stage them saving him. But the cat ends up attacking the two of them and the sisters end up going to save Lincoln and Clyde. Despite all this, the sisters still don't realize that they are still technically at fault and are the reason why Lincoln and Clyde even did all this to begin with, and they don't take any responsibility. They even manage to win the competition despite the characters they're cosplaying as being Lincoln and Clyde's characters, and all Lincoln and Clyde get is to be the servants of the cat during the production of the movie. And the episode just abruptly ends on that note. Yeah, we don't even get to see the movie. Oh, and by the way, this is a 22 minute special. 22 minutes of them as superheroes at a convention, and this 
is the only story they were able to come up with. This rushed, abrupt, unpleasant story of two characters just not being able to do what they like because funny, I guess, was what they came up with. This is my number one most hated Loud House episode because it goes against everything I love about this show. The characters are jerks, most of the episode is Lincoln suffering, the sisters are more of an entity rather than actual unique characters. The story is non-existent, the morals are horrendous, continuity be damned, and there is no way you can convince me that these characters are a loving family. This episode has all of that. And that is why it is my most hated episode of The Loud House. It sucks. Despite all of that, though, I still love this show. Yeah, even with all those bad episodes, I still adore The Loud House, and it's still my third favorite Nick show for a reason. With so much heart, passion, and amazing characters put into it, I can take another Sound of Silence or Serial Offender if it means I get more episodes like A Dark and Story Night, Any Given Sunday, Game Off, Down and Out, Head Poets Anxiety, and Really Loud Music. I absolutely love these episodes and would do anything for them. So yeah, I can tolerate one or two bad episodes a season if it means I get 20 that I love. And I think that's all there is to it. The Loud House is an amazing show with bad episodes. But come on, what amazing show doesn't have a few bad episodes in there? Now, I'm your average bonehead Jay, and I wish you all good night. Good night.